Welcome to Travel in Style, the series that brings you the very best of the best. This Catalonian capital is located on the shores of the Mediterranean, which brings it such pleasant temperatures that al fresco dining is a part of the culture, along with its wonderful markets, architecture, and all-around charm. This city has a dynamic and open personality, which tastefully mixes the old with the new. A fine example of this is our chosen hotel for this trip, the M.E. Hotel. Located in the hub of Catalonia's boldest architectural achievements and cultural landmarks, this hotel certainly has its own very unique structure and style. Here at Mi Barcelona, uh, it's, not that you, it's like an experience. You come here and you feel that someone is going to offer you something. We serve as you want to be served. Um, we, we make an special area uh, for our guests. Unquestionably, the Mi Hotel Barcelona is the most fashionable hotel in the city. The hotel has 258 rooms. We have 60 rooms that are, they are uh, placed at the level. This means the level is a special service, a VIP service, that goes from the 20th floor to the 29th. Okay, they have a private reception, and it's where are located all the suites, urban suites, love suites, the difference between urban and love, this is love, it's just made in one space, and the urban, it's separated by a wall. Our presidential room, it's located on the 29th floor. It's all room, it's the same floor. This means if you have a three parts, it's two rooms, and one living room, and a big bath that it's all the walls are made by glass. That means you can see the, all the city view when you are inside of the bath. We took a walk down to the Gothic Court, which years ago used to be known as the Cathedral Quarter and is arguably the most handsome part of ancient Barcelona. Gothic Quarcha. It's a must in Barcelona. If you don't walk along La Rambla, you don't know, you cannot say you have been in Barcelona. La Rambla is this point that, uh, well, everybody's going, the heart of the city. Barcelona is a city in the Mediterranean Sea. It's in uh, the northeast of Spain and very close to the French boundary. Because of this position, we're getting all kinds of cultures, not only in our history, even nowadays. Uh, this helps a lot to understand some other places. People in here, they can, feel, they can feel good moving around. They can stop in a restaurant and getting food that they will enjoy. That's a comfortable, comfortable place. The city also boasts the work of the modernist architect Antonio Gaudi, who gave Barcelona the better share of his works of genius. These include the unfinished church La Sagrada Femilla, Park Guela, and here, the Casa Batlló. They contract the most extravagant architect of those times, no? Gaudí. Uh, sure, the family, the owner, uh, well, they, they were not sure about what Gaudí would do. But actually, the building exists before Gaudí. Gaudí remodeled, absolutely. No, this is very classical. Eh? With the, when we observe uh, properly the, the frames of the windows, we can see that they are very straight lines, no? very uh, uh, square windows. Gaudí gives organicity, gives plasticity to the building. Eh? For Gaudí, buildings, they are alive. 
yet another Gaudi creation, the Sagrada Familia. Still under construction, this work is on a grand scale and began all the way back in 1882. The name of Sagrada Familia means sacred family, it's the holy family, it's a church dedicated to the Virgin Mary, St. Joseph and Jesus, and is a church or a, or a temple. It's a, an idea of uh, some neighbors of Barcelona that in the 19th century they decided to do a temple dedicated to the family, because for them the most important thing in the society is the family. They started in 1882, and in 1883 they chose Gaudí to continue the project. As you can see, the basic design of this church follows that of a Gothic style, with its wonderful stone carvings. But the real grandeur of the structure comes from the elongated towers, four above each of the three facades, representing the 12 apostles, and all reaching 100 meters in height, with four more towers representing the evangelists and rising to a lofty 170 meters. And although the cranes still loom above the cathedral, working on a daily basis to complete this masterpiece, it is still only expected to be finished by about 2026. Legend has it that when questioned about the time it would take to finish the cathedral, Gaudi is known to have said, my client is in no hurry, referring to God. Antonio Gaudi certainly left a legacy with this work of art and is in fact laid to rest here inside the cathedral. It is only when you look inside that you come to understand the complexities of his design and why this structure has taken so long to arrive at this stage and still has so many more years for completion. Visitors can also take the steps to the higher towers to view the city from above. But be warned, it's not for those with vertigo or claustrophobia. Considering the height of this cathedral, most architects would have been happy with some basic arches and the odd stained glass window. However, Gaudi totally bucked the trend and created some quite surreal designs, causing some to question his sanity. Matt. <laughs> Who is not mad, no? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, could be. Yeah. Gaudí was an, obs an, an obsess of the, of the job. Gaudí was a very religious person, was a person that never got married, that no, had no possessions. He sold all his uh, possessions for uh, financing Sagrada Familia. He, uh, well, could say had no uh, social life. Huh? He just worked and prayed. Every day he went to pray to the Gothic watch, to the ancient city, uh, Church of Berea, and in one of these ways is when he was run over, you know, when he was killed by a tram. So, uh, uh, well, maybe he was a mad, but he was a very interesting man. With all that walking, why not take the easier option of getting around and jump on a Segway? and take in some of that fresh Mediterranean Sea air, or visit some more of the national monuments that makes this city so special. But as the day is getting on, maybe a relaxing visit to the beautiful Park Guela would be a good idea. Originally built for the Barcelona aristocracy, but now open for everyone, this park contains many amazing structures, from dragons to twisting rock pillars and multicolored tiled mosaic seats, all designed by, you guessed it, Antonio Gaudi. Boy, he certainly made an impression on this city. So before you leave us, there is one last place that you must see, and that is the magical fountains of Mondrique. Built all the way back in 1929, it took only one year to complete with a workforce of 3,000 men. But now thousands more can enjoy this magical display of water, color, light, and sound.
this effervescent city is oozing with artistic youth and offers cultural diversity for any traveler looking for an alternative to sun, sea, and sand. Berlin is one of the leading cities in Europe for culture, politics, science, and media. It really is in a class of its own. Next to London, Berlin has the largest population in the European Union, topping over 3.4 million people, making it the largest city in Germany. These figures are not surprising, as within the city walls, Berlin is a hive of industry. Its population seem to work hard and play hard. It's a city of people who strive for life at its best. The last century has, for Berlin, been sadly destructive. The city was divided by a concrete barrier, officially called the Anti-Fascist Protection Wall. It was also known as the Wall of Shame. In 1989, the world watched in awe as news networks relayed pictures of the wall being demolished, thus paving the way for German reunification a year later. Along with its artistic architecture, Berlin has lavish gardens, parks, and forests that soften this industrial and hard-looking city. Is everybody ready? On the city's doorstep, is the very exclusive and very lavish residence of the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. This five-star luxury hotel captures tradition and sophistication, making it the perfect venue for today's jet set to explore this industrial and transient capital. In the Ritz-Carlton Berlin, I think there's no better place to be. It's right at Potsdamer Platz. Potsdamer Platz, 20 years ago, was called the No Names Land. What is No Names Land? It was divided between East and West. And if you look in front of our hotel, you will still see part of the wall, which was divided. The 11th floor is our classical presidential suite. It has about uh, over close to 220 square meters. And we just rebuilt it because we have uh, quite a few of state visits. And uh, this helps us to get more state visits in the future. They have a separate uh, a kitchen and a separate entrance. It has bulletproof windows, uh, three bedrooms, uh, a huge uh, living room of 55 square meters overseeing the Potsdamer Platz in the Sony Center. Pretty impressive. This really puts the property in a league of its own. You could spend longer than your average seven-day break in this presidential suite. Is everybody ready? The sights of Berlin just keep getting better as we arrive at the majestic residence of the Charlottenburg Palace. Being the largest palace in Berlin, the grounds are outstanding. Make sure you allow plenty of time to explore these enchanting gardens. Let's find out about the history behind the beauty. Sophie Charlotte, the first electress and later queen of Prussia, came here to Charlottenburg. Um, it was only a small village she founded, and uh, she was so fond of the era, the beautiful grounds, the river spray and so on, that she decided to have a summer residence, a small uh, palace for herself, and also a beautiful garden. The most famous rooms in the whole palace, the great um, reception room, the White Hall, and also the dancing room of uh, Frederick the Great, the Golden Gallery. The decor is exquisite. Close attention to detail was key in recreating this masterpiece. The only large palace in Berlin is Charlottenburg Palace. It, has, it had survived during the Second World War, but was also damaged nearly 50%. It's reconstructed according to old photos, copper engravings, paintings and so on, and people come to this place to see this beautiful palace and the garden as well, and the famous interiors, the rooms of Frederick the Great, he was the most famous king in Prussia, Mm-hmm. 
or behind the garden there's the river Spree. This river connects the, the center of Berlin with the Charlottenburg era here and uh, you can go by boat to this famous garden. This is a beautiful uh, item and, and you can travel here to these grounds. Step back in time and lose yourself in the fantasy. It's a world away from the hustle and bustle of city life. Exactly what you need on vacation. We have um, nearly half a million visitors each year and many come from uh, abroad, uh, or many people also of the United States of America. And we in invite them all to come here and, and see this beautiful place in Berlin. A hop, skip and a jump and we find ourselves at the gates of unfamiliar territory. It's not a spa, it's not a shopping center. Yes, we're at the zoo. Built in the inner city, the Berlin Zoo has evolved from the dark days of its cages in the 19th century to today's ultra-modern animal facilities. Berlin Zoo was founded 1844 as gift of the Prussian king to the Berlin people. We have nearly 14,000 animals in our zoo. It's the biggest collection of animals worldwide. One of the best known animals is the panda bear Bao Bao behind. And he is now the oldest panda bear living in one of the zoos. He's over 30 years old. I think the most known animal at this moment worldwide of the zoos is the polar bear Knut who is living in our grounds too. He was hand raised and is a famous animal with the most pictures ever have seen. We are the leadership in uh, the conservation of black rhinos. We keep the international stutbok of them and are very, very successful in breeding. In the last 20 years, more than 15 young rhinos were born here and sent to other zoos around the world. One very, very urgent aim of us is to teach the people in the living region what they have to do. It is absolutely needless to bring animals back if there is nothing changed in the mind of the people there. The ethos here is nature and nurture, so the zoo keeps the environment as natural as possible. Even all water treatments below ground have been banished. But of course the main focus are the animals that call it home. Our next stop is in the center of the former East Berlin. In the less developed part of town, we're at the location leading the capital's legacy, behind the Berlin Wall, a piece of history that stood for division, demise, and destruction between the East and West of Germany during the Cold War. Since 1989, the wall has been demolished and dismantled, but parts of the original wall still stand today. Artists, locals, and tourists from around the world see this as a blank canvas for expression and enlightenment. Many flock every year to visit this uplifting concrete wall that once cast such a shadow over the city. The East Side Gallery offers a long section of the wall near the center of Berlin. Here, approximately 106 paintings cover this memorial which, with a length of 1.3 kilometers, stands as the largest open-air gallery in the world. 2009 marked the 20th anniversary of the fall of the wall, and to celebrate, international artists were asked to return and redo some of their original artwork. After 20 years, they asked me to come back from India and uh, to paint it because they want to have a beautiful shape of this original work. This is the seven stages of enlightenment. This is the name of my painting. So I have done it before 20 years, before the opening of all. And my idea was that maybe the other side of German, they may get about some, some idea of God and going up. But till now, they could not copy it. Nearly 118 painters have contributed their work, but uh, now uh, five are missing, some they could not come, uh, more than 100 artists, they come back and they are painting and they have finished, uh, more or less now it is finished.
In the surrounding areas, you have the Alexanderplatz, which once was one of the busiest squares in the city. The site isn't the most aesthetically pleasing location we've visited so far, but the TV tower, or Fernstrom, holds the record for the largest structure in Europe. A complete renovation of this district has been commissioned by the city of Berlin, so watch this space as the new glass and steel structures evolve. Who knows, maybe a luxury hotel built on this site will be a star of a future world-class episode. The past is really a part of the present in Berlin, and our next whirlwind adventure highlights that fact. What is keeping this engine going? Uh, I've been working for one year uh, for Trabi Safari. So all the cars behind me are the Trabens, the typical East German cars. It was with the Wartburg the only cars you could have in East Germany. And we organized guided tours with our Trabens. So the deal is actually that you drive yourself and you take part to a guided tour. So we have two different tours, two different roads. And actually, our favorite tour is the Wild East Tour. So we drive only on the former eastern part. Uh, I, think, I think there is more sense with the Travens to drive only on the former eastern part. And we go to Alexander Square, so the city center of East Berlin, the former East Berlin, and uh, to the east side gallery, the longest part of the wall remaining in Berlin. So here you can see the Travens to a, a tour. So there is the leading car first and the three other cars. The Trabant becomes a sort of time machine for tourists to experience what life beyond the wall must have felt like. So I think the people come for the liberty, so for the freedom. So we have here um, an impression of freedom in Berlin. Everybody is it's just themselves and it's really interesting. Let's take a final look across the city as the magic of twilight shows yet another side to Berlin. The energy of this cosmopolitan city is ever growing. The youth have endless clubs, bars and restaurants to choose from. There's no denying that Berlin really is a city that never sleeps. The capital has come a long way from concrete walls and segregation. Today, its economic and political success sends a statement to the world of progress and stability. It seems the future is bright for Berlin. Well, that's all we have time for. So, till the next time, goodbye.